Here are three secrets of self-made millionaires. They started off and they made all their money in one generation. Number one, they put financial independence above all other financial considerations. They never buy new cars. Why? Because if you buy a new car, you're paying ten, twenty thousand dollars in depreciation just for the pleasure of driving it off the lot the first time. Instead, they buy cars that are two or three years old that are still under warranty and that are in excellent condition. All the money that the average person is spending in buying a new car every couple of years, they save and invest. Number two, self-made millionaires practice frugality, 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 frugality with every expenditure. They spend the first 20 years of their earning life being cheap, 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 and then they save and invest the money. By the time they're 45, they're millionaires. They practice frugality until they reach the magic millionaire mark. Number three, they spend 10 to 20 hours each month studying their money and how to invest it and grow it. They take money seriously and they become very knowledgeable and skilled in the business of money. They're being knowledgeable and skilled in how to deploy their funds. Even when they don't have much money, people making $30,000, $35,000 a year end up as millionaires by the time they're 50, just because they invested their money so carefully. Now, here's a final rule with regard to self-made millionaires, and it's this. The rule is that you become what you think about most of the time. The average self-made millionaire spends 10 to 20 hours a month studying their money. They spend 10 to 20 times as much as the average person, and as a result, they make better decisions. They don't get into debt, and they get out of debt quickly. And this must be your goal as well. Now, here are some key principles for getting out of debt. Number one, pay yourself first. The average person earns a living, takes their paycheck, pays all their bills, spends all their bills, spends all their money, and whatever's left over, they save. What you do is you take the first money out of your paycheck and save it before your expenditures. Your goal is to save 10 to 20% of your income off the top, and even more over time. Remember, whatever you do repeatedly becomes a habit and you become comfortable doing it. Sometimes I say to my audience as well, how many people here, from the time you took your first job to today, have already doubled your income? Yeah, that's cool. You see, you're still in debt. Increasing your income does not solve your financial problems. Only getting your financial problems. Only getting your finances under control. Which means paying yourself first. Start with a dollar, thirty dollars a month. That's one dollar a day. And what you do is you go down immediately to your bank and you open a separate bank account. And this is your financial freedom account. And you can open it with ten or twenty dollars. And from now on you deposit your savings in this account. And at the end of the month you go down and you put in thirty dollars. Put every unexpected amount in this account. Once the money goes into this account, you never take it out. Money only goes one way in this account. It goes in, it never goes out, except to be carefully invested where it can get the very best return. Now, the third key principle in getting out of debt is to activate the laws of accumulation and attraction. Every great financial fortune is an accumulation of many, many small amounts of money, which accumulate to make you financially independent if you start to attract more money into your life, keep putting it into this account. You will be astonished at how much you have. The fourth principle for getting out of debt is to delay, defer, and put off every expenditure that you possibly can. The more time you take to decide, the better decision you will make. In most cases, if you give yourself time to think about a purchase, you won't make the purchase at all. You will understand that there are better things you can do with the money, but you don't really need it. Do you find that the purchase, or whatever it is, contains no emotion, no joy, no excitement? Now, number five, and this is very important. This is what will make you rich. It will break Parkinson's law. Parkinson's law says it is. No matter how much you make, you seem to spend that much and a little bit more beside. Throughout your life, if you double, triple, quadruple your income, you'll double or triple or quadruple your expenses, and you just simply never get ahead. So your job is to resist the natural tendency to increase your expenditure as your income goes up over time. And what you do is you practice what is called number six, the wedge formula for financial independence. The wedge formula says that as your income goes up, your expenses go up, 
So from this point forward, you spend only 50% of your increased income on lifestyle, and you save the other 50%. If you do this, the most remarkable things will happen. Let's say, in the course of the coming year, your income goes up by uh, $1,000. Well, what you do is you resolve in advance to save 500 of that into your financial freedom account and spend only 500 or less. Once you make a habit of this, you'll become quite comfortable living on the remaining amount. You know when I say you should cut back on your expenditure, but it's not hard for you to promise now to save future increases. Remember, the best earning years of your life lie ahead. You're going to earn more money in the years ahead than you earned in your entire life if you just save half of the increase over your current income and let it grow with a miracle of compound interest. Now, seven open separate bank accounts for your home, your new home, that you want to buy a car, boat, debt reduction, and so on. One for financial freedom that you keep putting 10% or more into. And then you open another bank account if you want to buy a boat, and another bank account if you want to buy a car. Your main bucket is for savings to cover your expenditures if you lose your job. Your second bucket is for investments. Your third bucket is for the things that you want to buy. By moving your money around with these buckets, you'll get out of debt, You'll end up spending and living on 60 to 70 percent of your income and saving and investing and improving your lifestyle with a balance. Now, in getting out of debt, one of the most powerful things you do is to increase your income. Sometimes we ask this question, what is your most valuable financial asset? It's your ability to earn money. You could lose everything and be penniless, but as long as you still have your earning ability, those tools and techniques and methods between your ears, you can earn a wonderful living and earn it all back again. Here's another question. Would you like to double your income? Everybody says yes. You are going to double your income. It's inevitable if you work on increasing your earning ability by constantly investing in yourself. Your income will go up at 10, 15, 20, 20, 20, 25 percent per annum. And once you've doubled your income, double it again. So resolve today to be the best in your field. Join the top 10%. Join the top highest money earners in your field and earn the same money that they do. And remember this. What others have done, you can do as well. And the law of three says that 90% of the value of your contribution, your earning ability, is contained in three things that you do at your job. Always ask yourself, what are the three most valuable things that you do? If you're in management, the three most important things you do are to recruit, train, and manage. Recruit the best people, train them thoroughly, manage them carefully, and this is the great breakthrough. If your weakest key skill sets the height of your income, your weakest key skill sets the height of your earning ability. Ask this question, what one skill, if you are absolutely excellent at it, would help you the most to double your income? Double your earning ability, double your earning ability, double your value. Set this one skill as a goal. Write it down. Make a plan. Make a list of everything that you could do to master this skill and then work on this skill by becoming a little bit better every day. And you could be only one skill away from doubling your income as you probably are. And you probably know what that one skill is. And even if you don't like the scale, even if you don't like the scale, even if you're not comfortable with the skill, Set it as a goal. Make a plan. Work on it every day. And here's my promise. A month, a year from now, you'll look back and you'll have mastered the skill. And for the rest of your life, become a dough. It yourself project. For the rest of your life, concentrate on the one skill that can increase your earning ability faster than any other skill. So you're always working on getting better. There's three keys to lifelong learning. These three keys to lifelong learning. These three keys changed my life when I was in my 20s and I never looked back. Number one, read 30 to 60 minutes in your field each day. If you read 30 to 60 minutes in your field each day, you'll read one book a week. One book a week will be 50 books a year. Each year, by simply reading 30 to 50 books that will help you in your field. If you read 50 books a year, that's 500 books in 10 years. At the very least, you need a bigger house just to hold your books. Number two, listen to educational audio programs in your car. Audio listening has been considered to be the biggest breakthrough in education since the invention of the printing press. 
You can get so many valuable ideas and you can start them and stop them and turn them off and run them back and repeat them at your convenience by listening to the audio programs of top people. You're hiring these people to sit there and talk to you at your convenience, to stop talking when you want to think, to start talking when you want to think, to start talking again when you push the button and so on. The average person drives 500 to 1,000 hours per year. That's the equivalent of 12 to 25, 40 hour weeks. That's the equivalent of one to two full-time university semesters. And number three, attend every course and seminar live and online that can help you to improve your earning ability. You can learn from the finest experts in the world and you can learn the most important subjects you need to know to develop the critical skills you need to have to dramatically increase your earning ability. One day with an expert in your field has changed the lives of many people and it can change your life as well. The rule is to spend at least 3% of your income investing back into yourself and becoming better. Coming back is the best place to invest it would be back into learning how to become better at what you did in the first place to earn the money. If you had $100,000, the very best investment of all is not penny stocks or something else, is to invest it in yourself in becoming really, really good at what you do, invest it in your earning ability and getting into the top 10% of people in your field. Now the key is to be successful. Do fewer things but do more valuable things and do them more often and get better. Spend more time on the most valuable things that you do and get better and better at those. Skinny that will give you a higher payoff in your life than simply getting better at what you do most of the time. So here are the 10 keys to getting out of debt and achieving financial independence. Number one, set clear written goals for every part of your financial life. The very fact that you have clear written goals and plans will increase the likelihood of you achieving those goals and plans by about 10 times. Number two, do a complete financial analysis of your financial situation today. Sit down with a piece of paper, add it all up, figure out what you're worth, figure out your debts, figure out your minimum payments, figure out how much you're earning. Number three, draw up a monthly and annual budget and stick to it. Determine exactly how much you're going to spend on your residence, your home, your car, your entertainment, your food, your clothing, and so on, and stick to that budget every week, every month. W. Clement Stone once said, if you cannot save money, the seeds of greatness are not in you. Number four, reach back eating out. You know there was always be looking for ways to cut your costs. Number five, pay yourself first. Remember you are a creature of habit. Get into the habit of living on less than you were. Number six, practice the wedge formula for success and save or invest 50% of every increase in your income from now on. Number seven, open financially, it begins to accumulate over time. Number eight, dedicate yourself to lifelong learning. All the riches and rewards and happiness and respect and esteem go to the people who are good at what they do. Number nine, continually visualize yourself as debt free and financially independent. Just keep talking to yourself and visualizing that picture until it comes true. And finally, number 10, back your plans with persistence and determination. Once you start, never give up until you achieve your goal. Remember the great rule for financial success throughout the ages is simply spend less than you earn. Yeah, I have some good news for you. More people are going to make more money in the next few years that have been made in all of human history. In the year 1900, there were 5,000 millionaires in America. In the year 2000, there were 5 million millionaires. That's an increase of 1,000 times. Now, there was a leveling off in 2001, 2002. In the last two years, the number of millionaires has jumped 33%. It's jumped to 8.2 million millionaires in America. And virtually all of them are self-made, which means they started without, without a plot to you know what in or a window to throw it out of. And they made it in one generation. When we look at the wealthiest people in America today, Warren Buffett, uh, Michael uh, Dell, uh, of course, Bill Gates, Paul Allen, and the um, Walton family, all first generation multi-billionaires. We have a $12 trillion economy today that is growing at the rate of five to $600 billion a year. And all that money is going through somebody's fingers. And your job is to make sure it goes through yours and some of it sticks. Is that a good goal for today? And my job is to show you how to do it. Uh, the good news is that all the answers have been found.
Self-made millionaires have been studied exhaustively, they've been analyzed, they've been interviewed by the hundreds of thousands and millions, and what we know is exactly who they are, and what they do, and how they think, and how they tick, and the decisions they make, and the things that they do and they don't do, and the wonderful thing is, is if you do what other successful people do, you eventually get the same result that they do. Now some people say, well, I started off without any money, and I, you know, I don't have any money now. Well, <laughs> join the crowd, nobody's got any money. Most people are broke up until their 40s and 50s. So if you're broke today, you're just one of the gay. The only question is, do you stay there? And the answer is no. Now, when I started off in, in this many years ago, I uh, came from very poor beginnings. I did not graduate from high school. I finished in the half of the class that makes the top half. Possible. I, when I left school, I dropped out of high school. I uh, could only get laboring jobs. I was told, by the way, if you don't get a good education, you won't do well in life. You'll get good grades, uh, you won't get a good job, you'll go to college, you won't do well, and so on. And I believed that for a long time until I found there's hundreds of thousands, millions of people who dropped out of high school who went on to become millionaires and billionaires as well. The reason I pass say that to you, by the way, is don't let it hold you back. Don't let any experience that you've ever had in your life act as a break on your potential because there's hundreds of thousands of people who've had it worse than you could ever dream of who've gone on to accomplish wonderful things. So. I worked in laboring jobs for several years. I worked in construction. I worked on farms and ranches. I worked in factories putting nuts on bolts hour after hour. And one day, in a state of frustration, I began asking this question. Why is it that some people are more successful than others? Uh, in the Bible, there's a line that says, Seek and you shall find for all who seek. Find it. Ask and the door will be open. So I began asking other successful people, What are you doing differently from me? And they told me. And I did it. And I got better results. I got into sales when I could no longer get a laboring job. I think many of you, and uh, in sales, uh, I noticed that one of the guys in my company was making ten times as much as anybody else, and he was selling the same product out of the same office at the same price to the same people under the same conditions. He was making ten times as much as anybody else. So I went and asked him, "What are you doing differently from me?" And he told me, and I did it. Now, what I discovered, which changed my life, and which brought us here today, is I discovered the law of of, of cause and effect. The law of cause and effect, sowing and reaping, action and reaction, is a great, great universal or iron law of the universe. What it says is that everything happens for a reason, is that there are no causeless effects, is that even if we don't know what is causing the effect, we trace it back. It's the basis of the scientific process of all medical research, of all marketing, of all business, is if you can define an effect that you want, you can trace it back and find somebody who at one time did not have that effect and then find out what they did and then do the same things and you eventually get the same results. We say that success is not an accident. Failure is not an accident. Success leaves tracks. So if you just follow the tracks of other successful people, no matter where you're starting from, you eventually get to the same place that they get. Well, this, well, this was it. A shocker for me because, and I learned later in psychology, by the way, that one of the, the two most important things we need to have to be happy and healthy is a sense of control, a feeling that we are in control of our lives, that things are happening for a reason, and a sense of coherence, a feeling that things fit together. Well, when I realized the law of cause and effect explained everything, I thought, wow. So in sales, I went to the top of my sales force, I read and I learned, attended courses, and especially I applied what I learned. And then when I got into sales management, I again read the books and took the courses and asked for advice. And when I got into real estate and importation and development and manufacturing and distribution and a whole series of businesses over the years, first thing I did is I asked, how does it work? How do people succeed in this field? And then I buried myself and immersed myself. I spent hours and hours and hours studying. And then I did what the most successful people did. The interesting point. Oh, we say that nature is neutral. In other words, nature doesn't care who you are. It doesn't care if you're tall or short or male or female or black or white, educated or uneducated. Nature doesn't care. All that nature cares is that you do what successful people do. It's like making a recipe. Nature doesn't care if you follow a recipe. If you follow the recipe exactly, you get the dish. Nature doesn't care who's doing it. And that's the wonderful thing about our society. It's, it's basically like justice. It's blind. Yes, nature doesn't care. In fact, there are a lot of people who are not as smart and not as talented as you who are doing vastly better than you. Not because they're better, but because they're just following proven success methods. There's nothing that will make you matter than to see somebody who's dumber than you who's making more money than you. Right? <laughs> yeah, that experience. So what we do is we use proven success methods. We just find out what they are and we do them over and over again. Quick point, nothing works the first time. 
Okay, please understand that. Nothing works the first time. What is the average number of times that a person tries with a new goal before they give up? Can you guess? Well, the average is less than one. Because most people give up before they try even once. They say, that's a great goal. I'd love to be financially independent. And then they give up. They don't even try. They say, oh, but I couldn't because of this and because of that and so on. And then they move away to a wonderful place called Sunday Isle. You ever heard of Sunday Isle? Someday, I'll start saving money. Someday, I'll get out of debt. Someday, I'll lose weight. Someday, I'll start a business. Someday, I'll get serious about my finances. And most people live on someday I. Your job and my job is to vote yourself off the island, right? Do we start taking control of our lives? Well, about time. Some years ago, I was called by a major businessman, and he asked me if I would do a talk for his 800 entrepreneurs that own separate franchises within his organization on how to become a self-made millionaire. And I said, sure. When you're a young speaker, you agree to speak on any subject. Sure, I'll speak on that subject. Now, I was just like most people. When I was young, I wanted to be a millionaire by the time I was 30. And when I hit 30, I put it off to 35. And as I got to 35, and you put it off to 40. And then you kind of just don't look at it anymore. You forget about it and you feel the deck is stacked against you. Well, I was about 38, 39 when he called me up and asked me. I said, sure, no problem. And I said, now, what do I know about self-made millionaires? And this is a shocker. I didn't know anything. Well, I knew that they had more than a million dollars, but that's a real basic piece of knowledge, you know. So I certainly, I think, what do I know about side again? Just study them. And that's when I found out that they've been studied so thoroughly. Yes, we know everything there is to know about them. They are a source of incredible fascination. And there's 50 years of research. So I began to read the studies and find out where they came from and what they did and how they thought and where they started and the decisions they made and the kind of people they were. One of the things that I learned, by the way, is that becoming a self-made millionaire is not the important thing. What is really important is the person you have to become to become a self-made millionaire. You have to become a totally different human being. My friend said, one of my friends says that in order to, be, to achieve something you've never achieved before, you have to become someone you've never been before. And it's a really important insight, is the qualities that you need to develop, the qualities on the inside to become a self-made millionaire, are incredible qualities that make you a vastly better person. Not only better in terms of character, determination, discipline, decision-making, strength, and so on, but they make you a far better person. They round out your character in a far better way. So that the real payoff of becoming wealth, wealthy is not because you can eat more, because how many more meals can you eat? How many more clothes can you wear? Because it's the kind of person that you become, and then the kind of person, people that you associate, the kind of life that you have. And so, the things that we're going to talk about now, and I know that you're some of the smartest people in our country, so I'm going to give you these ideas very quickly, like dealing cards. What I found in my research is that there's a series of qualities that self-made millionaires have. If you have these qualities, your success is virtually guaranteed. And if you don't have these qualities, the qualities are learnable. Point number one is that all business or sales skills are learnable. All financial skills are learnable. If you can drive a car, you can learn any skill. You can drive a car and you can learn the skill. And number two is you're probably only one skill away from doubling your income right now. You're probably only one skill away from setting yourself on the road to becoming a self-made billionaire. That turns out to be the case for almost everyone. And if you don't know what that skill is, maybe over the course of the time we spend together, it'll jump out at you. But whatever it is, you've got to find it out and go to work on it because it is learnable. The learnable skill. People say, well, I don't mean, I've never been very good with money. Well, get over it. The fact of the matter is, you can learn what you need to learn to achieve anything that you want to achieve. So, the success secrets of self-made millionaires. Give yourself a score of 1 to 10. And if you are weak on one of these, it can be enough to hold you back. If you're strong on all of these, then there's no limit to what you can accomplish. The first is to dream big dreams. Dream big dreams. Practice what is called back from the future thinking and project forward. Develop a vision of yourself as happy, healthy, wealthy, thin. Practice what top people practice, which is what is called idealization. You project forward several years and that you imagine that your life is perfect in every way. Imagine that you have no limitations. Imagine that you have all the time and all the money and all the friends and all the contacts and all the education and all the experience and that you could be or have or do anything you want in life. If you could, what would it be? If your life were perfect in five years, what would it look like? How much would you be earning? How much would you be worth? What kind of a family life would you have? What kind of health would you have? What kind of car would you be driving? What would your life be like if you could wave a magic wand 
and make it perfect in every way. Now what we have found is this is the starting point of great riches and it's the starting point of great success in life is for you to have a dream or a vision of a wonderful future. Here's an exercise that we give people in our audiences is take a sheet of paper and make up what is called a dream list. Now imagine this is kind of like a kid's Christmas list and the it just allows you to just run wild and just write down everything that you could think of that you could possibly want. I had a friend who I taught this to and he got so excited about it, he bought a spiral notebook and he began writing and he go through the newspaper and every single thing he saw in the newspaper that was nice he wrote it down in the school. He ended up first time through with 330 goals. By the end of the month he had 500 things that he wanted. The interesting thing was that his life exploded. He, he activated the law of attraction he began to attract into his life people, circumstances, ideas and resources, I, the insights as began to move him toward the accomplishment of the goals, began to move the goals toward him. Number two is to do what you love to do. Whenever you find people who are really successful in life, they are people who do what they love to do. They, they love their work. The great rule for success in life is to find something that you love to do and then find a way to make a living doing it. Now, when you find what you love to do, it'll be something that gives you energy, it motivates you, it enthuses you. It's probably something that you were meant to do from the time you were born. And when you ask self-made millionaires, what sort of work do you do? They'll often say, I never worked a day in my life. I just do what I like to do. I had a graduate in my course once who came up to me and said, you know, that's interesting. He said, when I was a little boy, I loved to study um, airplanes. He said, I got an airplane books, and I had airplane models, and I had every toy planes, and, and then I got into competitions with the remote controlled planes. He said, when I grew up, I went to school, I studied aeronautical engineering. He said, today, so I'm 35, he said, I own three companies. One uh, builds a small aircraft, another one repairs and serves a small aircraft, another one is in leasing and chartering small aircraft. He said, I've never worked a day in my life. He said, I just played with planes since the time I was a kid. So one of the things that you can do is go back to the time when you were young, as a child between the ages of 7 and 14, before you discovered boys or girls, uh, and what is it that you really love to do? And you'll often find that within that is something you're supposed to do as an adult. Number three is commit to excellence. Now this is really, really important, and I had a hard time with this as a young man because I was never good at anything. I was never picked for any team, and if I was picked, I was the first person cut. I um, got lousy grades in every class. I got fired from multiple jobs. I even got fired from a job uh, pumping gas. Once, they could, can you imagine that? Being fired for pumping gas because you're no good. They came on and said, you're no good at pumping gas. How can you be no good? Little old ladies can pump gas. And there I was, I was no good at pumping gas. Anyway, so now I got fired and went from job to job. And then I discovered that all people who are successful are excellent at what they do. You know the old question they asked Willie Sutton, the bank robber, why do you rob banks? He said, that's where the money is. Well, being in the top 10% is where the money is. So what you have to do is you have to pay any price and make any sacrifice to get into the top 10% in your field. Now here's the good news. If you're doing what you love to do, you will want to be in the top 10% in your field. If you don't want to be excellent at what you're doing, it means you're in the wrong field. It just means that you're, you're, you're marking time, you're treading water. There's a lot of people who are in their field and they do their job and you know, they go home at night and don't think about their work and so on. And this kind of an attitude means that you have no future. You have a very shaky present. That crackling sound you hear is the ice breaking under your feet. Okay? And you have, a very, you have no future because if you're not doing what you love to do and throwing your whole heart into it, you're just marking time. But everybody is designed so that there is something that you love to do that you can do well. And the fact that you love it means that you probably have the ability to excel at it. So make this decision to get into the top 10%. And let me tell you how it changed my life. Here I was struggling in my late 20s. And I, I, I learned this as a breakthrough thought. Is that everybody's in the top 10% started in the bottom 10%. Everybody who's doing well was once doing poorly. Everybody who is at the top of your field today was once not even in your field at all and didn't even know it existed. What that means is that if you're willing to pay the price and work hard and make the sacrifices, you can get into the top 10%. Now, how long does it take? It doesn't take a week or a month. Most people are really impatient. To achieve mastery in your field takes five to seven years. You're going to say, five to seven years? Jeez, I'll be five to seven years older before I start enjoying the big rewards. Well, how much older will you be in five to seven years anyway? 
Now here's an important point, are you ready? The time is going to pass anyway. Time is going to pass. Five to seven years from now, five to seven years will have passed. The only question is, are you going to be at the top of your field, or are you still going to be down there with the, with the mediocre 80%? And the wonderful thing is, this is nobody's better than you, and nobody's smarter than you. If anybody else is at the top of their field, it means that you can be at the top of your field. Just go to them and find out how they got there, because they started at the bottom. Now, it may take longer for some people and less for others, but everybody who puts one foot in front of the other and keeps moving, actually gets it. And that's where all the rewards are. And not only that, that's where all the joy in life is. When you're really good at what you do, you feel wonderful about yourself. You're respected and esteemed by everybody around you. You can, you can write your own ticket, you can open any door when you're good at what you do. Because you get up in the morning and you know you're good. And, 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 and that is more important than the rewards that go with it. The next key is to develop your unique talents and abilities. Every single person is designed from infancy with special talents and abilities that if you develop them to their height, can enable you to accomplish anything you want in life. Everyone is genetically structured to be able to do something superbly, to do something they enjoy, to do it well, and to get great satisfaction from it. Peter Drucker often asks the question, what are you good at? What are you good at today? What should you be good at? What could you be good at? What will you be good at? And so one of the questions that we ask is, looking back in your life, what has been most responsible for your success up to now? What has been most responsible in the past? What is it that you have done that has gotten you the best results? Because as we said before, success leaves tracks. And if you look back into your past, you'll often find indicators that guide you to your future. Do you remember that fellow that won $300 million in the lottery? He was a high school physics teacher. And they asked him what he's going to do with it. He said he's going to take a week off and then get back to work because he doesn't want to give up his job teaching high school physics because he loves his work so much. That is a person who's in the right place for him. And now he can just drive to it in a nicer car. That is. Now, the next key to, to the next key to becoming a self-made millionaire is to see yourself as self-employed. What we found is the top 3% of adults in our society see themselves as self-employed. They see themselves as in charge of their own lives. When I started off my career as a young man, I was 21 years old, working as a construction laborer, living in a one-bedroom apartment, broke, taking buses two hours every morning to get to work, and buses two hours to get back. I still remember that, and I still remember a light going off one evening. I was sitting there in my little apartment in my little kitchen alcove, and I suddenly realized that I was responsible, is that I was in charge of my own life, that no one was coming to the rescue. And it was one of the great turning points in my life. So what you find is that all exceptional people are highly responsible people. They look upon themselves as self-employed. Sometimes I'll ask an audience, I'll say, how many people here are self-employed? And some people will raise their hand and some won't. I'll say, now what's the true answer to this question? And the true answer is that everyone is self-employed. The biggest mistake you can ever make is to ever think you work for anyone else but yourself. Even if someone else assigns your paycheck for you all your life, the most valuable people in any organization are the people who treat the company as though it belongs to them. They see everything that happens as affecting them personally. They're not the nine-to-fivers, the no-hopers that say, oh, I go to work, but I'm out of work, I don't think about my work. These people, somebody has told them that's a clever way to think, it's the way losers think. Winners think about their company, and when they're not there, they think about how they can do it better. When something happens in their company, they take it personally, because they see themselves as highly responsible. As a result, they're paid more, they're given more educational opportunities, they're promoted faster, and these are the people that eventually, like cream, rise to the top of every organization and every industry, the top 3%. The next key to becoming a self-made millionaire is to develop a clear sense of direction. Developing a clear sense of direction means that you need to become intensely goal-oriented. We find that all successful people are goal-oriented. There's an old saying, you can't get a target that you can't see. You've got to know what you want in every area of your life. Some years ago, I worked with the Hunt Oil Company in Texas. The Hunt Oil Company was founded by H.L. Hunt, who became the wealthiest, self-made, multi-jillionaire, billionaire in the world. At his peak, he owned 200 companies and had a royalty income of $3 million a day. Most phenomenal man, by the way. And he was interviewed by a friend of mine on television before he died in the early 70s. And he was asked, what are the secrets to success? He said, the keys to success have only been two through all my life, and I will tell you what they are. 
He said, number one, he said, decide exactly what it is you want. Then write it down and make a plan to achieve it. And number two is determine the price you're going to have to pay to get it. And then resolve to pay that price. Now, where the law of sowing and reaping cause and effect, I learned an additional point to that. I learned that your current life today is the result of the price you've sown up to now. It is whatever you've put in, you get out. So whatever you're getting out today is a result of what you've put in. If you don't like what you're getting out, what you have to do is you have to put in something different. What I found is this, is that life is always just in the long run. So, so therefore, life says this, is there's a price you have to pay and there's two qualities. First of all, you have to pay the price in full for your success of study, preparation, hard work, and so on. And second of all, you have to pay the price in advance. You don't get it afterwards. Where the world works is first you put in what you need to put in, and then you get out the rewards. So you have to ask yourself, what is the price that you have to pay to achieve the success thing you desire? And you have to write it down and make a plan and work on it every day. Now let me give you a quick exercise, which is my only uh, take-home or homework exercise uh, for our time together. I want you to take a piece of paper like this and write down 10 goals that you'd like to accomplish in the next 12 months. Write the word goals in today's date at the top of the page. Write down 10 goals you'd like to accomplish and then ask yourself this great question. If you could only accomplish one goal on this list, but you could accomplish it within 24 hours, which one goal would have the greatest positive impact on your life? Now this is a great question because it will usually jump out at you. You say, that's the one. If I had this, that would have more of an impact on my life than anything else. Sometimes it's a financial goal, sometimes it's a health goal, sometimes it's a relationship goal. But whatever it is, put a circle around that goal, and then turn the page over, and write it at the top of the page. Set a deadline on the goal. Make a list of everything that you could think of to do to achieve the goal. And then begin working on your list. Here's the kicker. Do something every day. Do something every day that moves you in one step forward towards your major goal. I promise to you that this exercise of selecting your most important goal, making a plan, and working on it every day will change your life in ways that you cannot imagine. They say that people begin to become great when they, de when they determine their major definite purpose, number one goal, and work on it every day. It is the secret to becoming a self-made millionaire. It's the secret to great success in life. My promise to you is a week, a month, a year from now, you'll look back and you'll be absolutely staggered at the difference it makes. I was giving a seminar uh, not long ago and a gentleman came up to me. He said, you know that goal setting exercise? It changed my life 10 years ago. He said, I was broke. I was divorced. He says, I was an alcoholic. Then somebody dragged me to one of your seminars. He said, and I did that exercise and I picked my major goal. He said, it changed my life. I said, in what way? He said, today, he said, I'm worth $40 million. I said, wow. He said, yes, and I owe it to that lesson. Next, he has refused to consider the possibility of failure. It's the most amazing darn thing is that the, the fear of failure is the greatest single obstacle to success in adult life. And it's not failure itself. Because each one of you is a professional failure. Each one of you has failed over and over and over again. Is that true? All of us fail. All human beings fail over and over. Nine out of ten things that we try don't work out the way we expect it. We have failures in relationships and in jobs and in careers and investments and everything. It's not the failure that holds you back. The failure makes you smarter. We say that it is the fear of failure, not failure, that holds you back. And the way that you overcome failure is you never consider the possibility of failure. The rule is this, is there's no such thing as failure, there's only feedback. Is when you try something that doesn't work, you get feedback, not failure. And recognize that most things you try aren't going to work the first few times. So what you do is you say, oh, that's an interesting bit of uh, feedback. <laughs> and you pick yourself up and you move forward and you have more feedback and you move forward. To become a self-made millionaire, you're going to fail over and over again, year after year after year. But your brain has a cybernetic mechanism, which means that everything, sometimes you try something, you get feedback, which makes you smarter. And when you try something else, you get feedback, which makes you smarter. And eventually, you reach the point where you're too smart and you stop making mistakes. You start to do more and more things right and fewer and fewer things wrong. But you can't get there unless you have experienced the failures. Henry Ford once said that failure is merely an opportunity to more intelligently begin again. And then they pass on one great rule to you, which has been discovered in interviewing self-made millionaires. Self-made millionaires look into every failure for something good. They say, there's got to be something good in this that I can benefit from, and surprise, surprise, they always find it. 
Second is the self-made millionaires always seek the valuable lesson in every setback or obstacle or temporary failure, and they always find the lesson. Now, what do failures do? Failures whine and cry and think about what they've lost and blame their problems on someone else. Successful people say, what can I learn from this that will make me smarter next time? And my promise to you, those who seek find, is if you go looking for a valuable lesson in the biggest problem that you're facing today, you'll always find the lesson. Here's another possibility. Your biggest problem today could be the biggest gift that you have ever received because it may contain within it the lesson that will make you successful. If you stop thinking about what happened and who's to blame and you start looking for the gift within your problem, sometimes it can transform your life. The next key is to dedicate yourself to lifelong learning. Now, what takes you from rags to riches is personal development, personal professional development. In the 21st century, as Peter Drucker says, knowledge and skill are the keys to the 21st century. And the only thing that will be relevant, the only skill that will be relevant in the 21st century is the ability to learn new skills. Because virtually everything you know is becoming obsolete at a rapid rate. Stephen Covey says that your current knowledge base has a half-life of two years. Which means that half of everything you know will be irrelevant within two years. And two years from now, half more. So if you're not continually learning and upgrading your knowledge and skills, you're not staying in the same place. As Pat Roddy says, the basketball coach says, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. If you're not constantly learning, you're actually falling behind. So here are the three keys to continuous learning. Number one is read in your field 30 to 60 minutes each day. In other words, turn off the television, turn off the radio, put aside the newspaper, and just read in your field. The very best places to read, by the way, are books. Read books, the best-selling books written by the most successful people in your field, because books contain a wealth of riches that can enable you to function at a far higher level, to get much better results than you, than, than you could before. So read 30 to 60 minutes a day. I've had people tell me, countless people over the years, that reading an hour a day has doubled and tripled their income within a year. The second thing you do is take every course that you possibly can. The, the courses and seminars that are available to you in your field that are given by professionals that are courses that have been developed over years and years and years. They have been tested and tested and tested. The person who is talking to you for several hours has spent thousands of hours learning their subject. They have dry tested this or, or done test runs with thousands of other people. When you take a course, you can learn enough information in one or two days more than you could learn in two or three years or maybe even a lifetime. All this still been put together. People say, I can't afford a course. You cannot afford not to buy books. Can't afford not afford not to go to courses. Some years ago, I had a dentist. And he was a very successful dentist. It was recommended to me by a friend. And this dentist retired at the age of 53. And just before he retired, he sold his practice for about $2 million. Just before he retired, he told me why. He said about that eight years before, he had attended a dental con congress in Hong Kong. He's from, this is from California. He'd flown all the way to Hong Kong to attend this International Dental Congress because there were specialists giving private lectures, sort of plenary sessions on the side. And he attended this session, and it was on a particular technique of cosmetic surgery that this dentist had developed that no one else knew. We could basically straighten out a person's entire front jaw so they looked beautiful at a very low cost and a very high level of effectiveness. He came back and he began implementing this in his practice. People began flying from 500,000 miles away. Every dentist set their, their families, members, and themselves to this dentist. He was able to charge whatever he wanted to charge. He said eight years later, he retired as a self-made millionaire at the age of 53. He enjoyed his money for the rest of his life from what he learned from one session at one convention, one course. Now, that's, that is a true story, and maybe it's an exception, but you can never tell where the information is going to come from. The third uh, way that you can upgrade your skills is listen to audio programs in your car. The average driver drives 500,000 hours a year, 25 to 50,000 miles. If you listen to audio programs in your car, according to the University of Southern California, you will get the equivalent of almost full-time university attendance just listening to learning material as you drive around. It can totally and profoundly change your mind. Very, very important. Here's an interesting point. The more you commit yourself to becoming the best person you can be, the more you like yourself and respect yourself, the more energy you have, the bigger goals you set for yourself, the more you persist, 
When you invest in yourself and you read and learn and upgrade your skills, you're telling yourself, wow, I am a person with a great future and it's up to me to maximize my potential. And your self-esteem goes up, your self-respect goes up, your sense of personal pride goes up, and you start to get promoted more and better and better and pay more off in, in every part of your life. Well, the next is to develop a workaholic mentality. In our society today, you've got all these people talking about take it easy, have balance in your life, relax, lean back, have fun at work, happy, happy, get along with your co-workers. This is loser talk, loser, loser, loser. Now, there's a time in your life when you can back off, all right? You can take it easy, but that's when you've made it, not before you've made it. Because before you've made it, you're in a competition with hundreds of thousands of millions of other people like at the Olympics who also want to make it. And in order for you to win, you are going to have to work harder and work better and work smarter than they do. So the rule is to develop a workaholic mentality. What does this mean? It means that you start a little earlier, you work a little harder, and you stay a little later. Use what I call the 40 plus formula. The 40 plus formula says that working 40 hours a week gets your survival. And that's all. You work 40 hours a week, you survive. You make no progress. You don't go ahead. You just barely hang on. Every hour that you invest in your work or yourself over 40 is an investment in your future. So you can tell what your future is going to be with unerring accuracy by looking at how many hours over 40 you put in. Now, how many hours does the average self-made millionaire in America work until he passes the million dollar mark? 59. Some of them work 70, 80, 90. The average is 59 hours. How much does the average top executive work? 59 hours. Now that's rule number one is the hours you put in over 40. People say, well, my office is locked and I can't get in more than 40 hours a week. Then good, then spend the rest, rest of the time investing in yourself, getting better at your work when you do do it. Now, here's my second principle, and this principle changes your life. It is this, is work all the time you work. When you work, work, don't play. Only 50% of working time today is wasted, and it's wasted and idle conversation, personal business, Family phone calls, surfing the internet, and reading the newspaper, drinking coffee, long lunch times, coming in late and leaving early. And then the other 50%, you're scrambling because you, now you're behind because you wasted so much time fooling around. Now you start to work and you don't work on high priority tasks to try to get rid of all the little stuff. So what happens is the big tasks begin to build up like an avalanche overhang and they cause enormous stress. And you go home at night and you're thinking, does this job, I've got to get this project finished. But I can't discipline myself to stop talking to my coworkers. Every time one of them comes in, I, I, like automatic, like a conditioned response, it's blah, blah time. Chatter, 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 chatter. No, what you have to do is work all the time you work. If someone comes in and says, hi, you've got a minute to talk, you say, yes, but not now. Why are we talk after work? Meanwhile, I've got to get back to work. Tell you what, why don't you go down the hall and ruin his career? But don't sit here and ruin mine. It's really important. There's a great story of a little girl goes to her mother and says, mommy, why is it daddy always brings his briefcase home and he works in the evenings and he works on the weekends and he doesn't spend any time with the family? And she said, well, honey, you have to understand, daddy can't get all his work done at work, so he has to bring it home. She said, why don't they put him in a slower class? The next key is to get around the right people. This is a key for becoming a self-made millionaire. Get around the right people. Dr. David McClellan at Harvard did studies for 25 years looking into why it is that some people succeeded greatly in life. What he found was that as much as 99% of your success in life is going to be determined by what he called your reference group. Your reference group are the people with whom you habitually associate. They're the people that you associate with at work, the people you associate with at home, your church, your political party, your social circle. What he found in working with people is that changing a person's reference group totally transformed the way they think. Why? It's because we are like chameleons and we absorb through the skin the attitudes, the opinions, the behaviors, the style of dress, the style of speech of the people with whom we associate most of the time. If you start to associate with winners most of the time, you find that they have a totally different worldview. They're positive, they're upbeat, they're focused, they're learning, they're growing, they're positive of what they're doing, and you start to become like that. We know that our relationships determine 85% of our happiness or unhappiness in life. In other words, if you have bad relationships and personal relationships, they will drag you down worse than a sea anchor. If you work for a bad boss, they'll destroy all your joy in work. If you have one negative coworker, and they found that one negative person in an office could cast a blackness over the whole office, 
because of his or her negativity. And so the most important thing you do is you choose your relationships with care and only associate with people that you like and respect and enjoy being around. Next thing is be prepared to climb from peak to peak. One of the keys to becoming a self-made millionaire is to realize that life is never in one continuous train. It's always up and down. So it goes up like if you climb a mountain peak, you have to go down into the valley before you climb the next peak. So all of life is cycles and trends. All of life is cycles and trends, and there's up cycles, and there's down cycles, and there's up trends, and there's down trends. The question is, what is the general direction of your trends? We say this, is that life is two steps forward and one step back. Successful people focus on the two steps forward, and then they protect themselves on the downside. They build up cash reserves. They put in stop-loss orders on their stock market. They very carefully watch what they're doing. So they try to maintain that two steps up, and then make sure that the one step back is not so far. And then they want to make sure that this curve is generally upward. So that each time there's a step back, they're still further ahead than they were before. The next one, which is to develop resilience and bounce back. Developing resilience and bouncing back is one of the key qualities of self-made millionaires. Because as I said right at the beginning, most things won't work. And this is a very interesting point, is that you're going, to, you're going to be knocked down over and over again. And what we know, as my friend Charlie Jones says, is you have to bounce and don't break. And when things go wrong, bounce. And so, so what I learned many years ago was this interesting technique of what is called mental rehearsal. And mental rehearsal says that you mentally prepare for the inevitable downturns before they occur. So you say, all right, in the course of life, things are going to go wrong. But when they do, I'm not going to become upset. I'm not going to get mad or angry or anything else. I'm just going to take it and learn from it and pick myself up and keep going. Sometimes I ask this question, does anybody here have any problems? Everybody says, yes, everybody's got problems. Well, here's the rule, is all of life is a continuous series of problems. They never end. Problems just keep on coming like the waves of the ocean. The only break in this unbroken series of problems will be the occasional crisis. So life will be problem, 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 crisis. Problem, 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 crisis. It's like the waves of the ocean. Six problems and a crisis. Six problems and a crisis. Which means that everybody here is either in a crisis right now, has just gotten out of a crisis, or is just about to have a crisis. So what we have found is this. The hallmark of superior people, 30 years of research, is how you respond to a crisis. How you deal with problems, how you respond to a crisis. And what we have found is this, is superior people look for the solution to every problem. They don't allow themselves to become upset and angry when something goes wrong. They say, okay, what's the solution? And they become intensely solution-oriented. When you have a very intense problem, that stimulates creativity to solve the problem. But what you do is you write and define the problem clearly. If you have a problem, you say, wait a minute, what is my problem? What is it that I'm worried about? And write it down. And the very act of defining a problem clearly often triggers the solution to the problem. One last technique that I want to give you with regard to your major definite purpose. If you only do these two things as a result of our time together, they will transform your life. You've already identified the one goal that can have the greatest positive impact on your life. Now what you do is you take that goal and you write it at the top of a page in the form of a question. And you say, let us say you, your goal is to double your income. That can have a major impact on your life. Say, what are all the things that I could do to double my income in the next 12 months? Why, it is a clear question. Even better, if you're earning $50,000 a year today, right? What could I do to earn $100,000 over the next 12 months? The more specific the question, the better. Then, you devote yourself to writing 10, 20 answers to this question. You must write a minimum of 20 answers. Work harder, and work smarter, start earlier, stay later, change occupations, upgrade my skills, whatever it is, keep forcing yourself to write till you've written 20 answers. We call this mind storming. The first three to five answers will be easy. The next three to five answers will be difficult. The last 10 answers will be incredibly difficult. But I have given this exercise to people who've gone on to become millionaires so many times I've lost track. Because they often find that the 20th answer changes their whole life. And if you've ever done this once, it's absolutely staggering. More people have become millionaires with this simple idea of mind storming. What I call the 20 idea method.
than any other single method of creative thinking ever discovered. Once you've got your 20 answers, pick one answer and take action on it immediately. Once you've got, it doesn't matter what it is, just take one answer and take action on it and that will keep, you know, thinking and acting creatively all day long. The number, uh, the next the key to becoming a self-made millionaire is to become an unshakable optimist. Unshakable optimist means that you think and talk about what you want most of the time. Optimists think and talk about what they want. They look for the good in every situation. They seek the valuable lesson. They're constantly feeding their mind with great ideas, which opens up new perspectives. What I have found is that optimists have three wonderful qualities. Number one is they learn more things. As a result, they dramatically increase the likelihood that they will learn the right thing at the right time. Number two is they try more things, which dramatically increases the likelihood that they'll try the right thing at the right time. And number three is they persist. They never give up. Optimists make a decision and once they've decided they're going to become wealthy, they just never stop until they achieve that goal. Now, will they have many setbacks and obstacles and difficulties? You know that almost everybody succeeds in a different direction from what they originally intended or from what they originally thought, but they just keep going. Almost like a football player running down the field, running, blocking, changing, moving back, forward, continue, never loses sight of the goal. So optimists learn more things, Try more things, says one. I want to leave you with the last two qualities of self-made millionaire. Second to the last quality is that they develop the qualities of courage and persistence. I said before the biggest single obstacle to success is the fear of failure. The antidote to the fear of failure is the habit of courage. And what we know is that you need two types of courage to succeed. The first type of courage is the courage to begin. It's the courage to launch with no guarantees of success. Someone once said that if all obstacles must first be removed, nothing will ever get done. So successful people are willing to think, plan, make decisions, and then take action with no guarantees. We say leap, and the net will appear. Take action with no guarantees, and then learn. The second part of courage is the courage to endure. It's the courage to persist. It's the courage to keep on keeping on. It's to make the decision in advance that you will never give up. No matter what happens, you will never give up. You will get knocked down over and over again, but you'll never give up. And the interesting thing is if you make that decision in advance, you'll find yourself continually bouncing back. So courage means, it means the courage to begin and the courage to endure. And the final quality of self-made millionaires, and Napoleon Hill called this the master key to riches. After studying 500 of the richest people in American history, he said it's the quality of self-discipline. It's the ability to make yourself do what you should do when you should do it, whether you feel like it or not. Quality of self-discipline is the quality that will make you a big success. It's the ability to force yourself to do what you know you should do. And here is the wonderful discovery. This persistence is self-discipline in action. Every time you persist, you build your self-discipline. Every time you practice self-discipline, you build your ability to persist. And the two of them are tied into your self-esteem. So the more you persist, the more you like yourself. And the more you like yourself, the more dis discipline you have. And the more discipline you have in practice, the more you like yourself. As a result, the more you persist. And eventually, you get onto an upward spiral, but you become absolutely unstoppable. You reach the point where you know you can achieve the goal and nothing in the world can stop you. And every step that you take forward makes you stronger and stronger and stronger. Until finally people say, I know one thing about him, I know one thing about her. You cannot stop him or her. Once they've decided they want something, they will not stop until they get it. And when you develop that quality, there will be nothing that is impossible to you. So let me just leave you with these last points. We're living in the very best time in all of human history. More people are going to make more money in the next few years than have ever been made in all of human history. More people are going to become millionaires and are becoming millionaires today at a faster rate than we ever thought possible. And no one is better than you and no one is smarter than you. And if you do what other self-made millionaires do, then nothing in the world can stop you from eventually getting the same results as other self-made millionaires. At a
Welcome to a transforming journey that will unleash your financial potential and fulfill your abundance aspirations. Today, we delve into millionaires' mindsets and what it takes to be wealthy and successful. This path centers on a simple but fundamental truth. Becoming a millionaire requires a mentality shift from scarcity to plenty, from constraint to limitless possibilities. Taking responsibility for your financial future choices and daily actions is the first step. Becoming a millionaire is more than just getting rich. An attitude of discipline, commitment, and steadfast belief in wealth creation is needed. Recognizing that success is earned via focused effort, not luck, is key. As we explore the principles and techniques that have made millions of people millionaires, remember that you can change your financial situation. By taking responsibility for your thoughts, behaviors, and financial future, you start a sequence of events that can bring you endless wealth. Ready to adopt a millionaire mindset? Are you ready to take charge of your finances and plan for success? Please join me on this remarkable trip that promises a life beyond your wildest dreams. I think you'll agree with me that everyone wants to know how to get rich and become a millionaire. Some people just don't know where to begin, which is a shame. You might be shocked to learn that you can start today to get rich in your own way. Right away, I want to praise you on your choice to teach yourself. As a word of warning, I'd like you to pay close attention to this movie because I have a gift for you in the middle of it. There are over 80% of self-made millionaires in the U.S. who started out with nothing or very little. That sounds a lot like me. When I was young and in my early 30s, I never had extra money to start a fortune. It looked like there were always enough bills, if not too many, to spend all the money I made. I had debts all the time. You should be ready for your chance because you wouldn't have been able to do anything with a great business chance if it came up. You wouldn't have been in the right frame of mind. I learned that most of the people around me were in the same situation when I started to learn about making money and self-made millionaire. Uh, there wasn't much chance that the dream of getting really rich would come true. You could end up with more bills than money or assets, just like they did. There's no need to say more than that. The stats are pretty scary. Statistics from the insurance industry show that only 1 in 100 people who hit retirement age will be wealthy. Four out of every hundred will be able to support themselves financially. After a lifetime of well-paying work in the richest society in human history, only 15 will have saved some money. The other 80 will depend on benefits, be working, or be broke. But why does this take place? Why do poor people retire? People don't have a good retirement for two main reasons. First, they never decide to be rich when they quit. They wish, hope, and pray that they will do it, but they never say for sure that they will. Second, they put things off until it's too late, even if they want to retire rich. They always have a good reason to put it off. But if they don't want to live that way and become rich, it starts with a wish and a decision. There are four important steps you must take, all beginning with the letter D. If you really want to beat the odds, become financially independent and retire rich. The first is want. You have to want it badly enough to commit irrevocably and be prepared to give up things. Making a decision is the second date. You have to decide right now to do everything it takes. Be prepared to pay any cost, travel any distance in order to reach your objective. For financial success, you also need to develop discipline and resolve. Determination, the third D, is sticking with it till you succeed in spite of all of the challenges and setbacks you may run across. The fourth D is discipline, the discipline to know yourself and to form the routines required to become financially independent. These are the four D's, desire, decision, determination, and discipline. And you may gauge your future success by ranking your performance in each on a 1 to 10 scale. Yet, where to begin? Three immediate actions you can take to implement these concepts are as follows. First and foremost, decide today that, in spite of any short-term challenges, you will become financially independent. Subsequently, put it in writing, devise a strategy, and begin daily work on it. Second. Make a predetermined decision that you will not give up, you will not give up, and you will keep going until you reach your objective. Third, I have a totally free present for you that is a training on how to draw in money, prosperity, and plenty. In only 21 days, financialize your life without compromising your morals, health, or overworking. And in this way, you might develop a millionaire mentality. The link is going to stay in the description. That being stated, I'll offer some advice to assist you. See the way ahead and create objectives to make more money than you could have ever imagined. 
The specifics of these six exercises can help you find financial freedom and become a millionaire, as well as clarity in your life. Firstly, how to make extra money. Draft your ideas first. Go get a spiral notepad. Write down all the ideas that occur to you during the day, and if at all feasible, carry it around. Periodically go over this idea log. Sometimes the thought that strikes you in a discussion while driving, sitting, reading, or watching TV could be the one that launches your career. If increasing your income is your aim, list every plan you have for achieving it. Write down the concept and capture it is the rule. You'll usually forget it if you don't jot it down right away. Second, set goals. Sit back and consider your financial objectives. Regularly take time to unwind and consider your objectives and the challenges standing in your way. You frequently get ideas during these downtimes that can save you hours, days, and perhaps years of laborious work. The third is using the magic wand approach to achieve financial freedom. Daydreaming is a regular exercise to practice. This is also referred to as the magic wand technique at times. Imagine you can wave your magic wand over your present predicament or issue. As you wave your magic wand, picture that everything that stands in your way of your financial objectives is gone. Fourth, consider your financial objectives and project four. Suppose you want to launch a profitable company in a certain industry. Imagine that three or five years from now, you have a prosperous company in that sector. It would look like what? It would be enormous, right? You would work with what kind of people, uh, what sort of market reputation would you enjoy? At what sales and profitability level would you be? How would you manage this company? And moreover, what might you do now to turn this future ambition into a reality? Fifth tip, mental assault is the key to becoming rich. The 20 ideas method or mental assault is maybe the most effective way to stimulate creative thought in any subject. Using this concept more than any other creative thinking technique ever found, more people, including me, have become rich. Using this method alone, in fact, might help you become financially independent. The technique is easy. Start a piece of paper with any problem or objective, written as a question at the top. To double your income in the next 12 months, for instance, you would write, how can I double my income over the next 12 months? You then discipline yourself to write a minimum of 20 responses to that question. If you would want, you can write more than 20 responses, but you have to exercise self-control and resolve to write at least that many. Sixth tip, put money away and become a millionaire. Saving dollar 100 every month from the time you started working at the age of 20 until you retired at 65 and investing that money in a mutual fund that yielded an average of 10% return would be one of the simplest approaches. At retirement, it would be valued about $1,800,000. Most likely your character and mentality would be so shaped by your discipline and will to save at any age, year after year, that you would wind up making far more than the 10% yearly. Nonetheless, everyone may become a millionaire on their own for $1.100 a month. Take action. Focus questions make you think and come up with new ideas. After you set a goal, ask yourself, why am I not already here? What's the main reason? To start your journey to wealth, do these routines right now. There's a gift I left for you in the video description that you should take if you really want to change your financial situation and get rich. We'll keep the link in the text. You can learn how to bring money, wealth, and abundance into your life in just 21 days without giving up family, health, morals, or working too much. And this is how you can think like a millionaire. Now, remember that you will only be able to get the lessons for a short time. So. If you really want to get ahead financially, you need to make a choice right now. Share this video with your friends, family, and other people you care about. Simply tell us in the box below how much you liked the movie and which lesson you found most interesting. We'll see you in the next one. Finally, remember this. Becoming a millionaire is not a goal, it's a path. A journey of learning about yourself, growing, and becoming more powerful. It's not just about getting rich. It's also about developing a mindset of plenty of strength and unwavering drive. As this part comes to a close, I want you to take charge of your financial future. You are responsible for what you think, what you do, and what you believe about money. Know that you have the power to make your dreams come true and change your fate. Adopt the habits, way of thinking, and success concepts we talked about today. It's important to always be striving for perfection and to stay committed to reaching your goals. Remember that only a few people can become millionaires. 
Anyone who is ready to put in the work, invest in themselves, and believe in their own limitless potential can become a millionaire. So my friends, go out with faith. Be in charge of your own money matters and don't be afraid to dream big. When it comes to getting rich, the only thing that stops you are the limits you set for yourself. Thanks for coming with me on this journey of change. Happy birthday. May you be successful, wealthy, and... There are five common mistakes that prevent the majority of Americans from becoming wealthy. The first reason why people don't become wealthy is because it never occurs to them that it is possible for them. They never take any of the steps necessary to make it a reality. The second reason that people don't become wealthy is that they never decide to. Even if it occurs to a person that he could become wealthy if he just did certain things in a certain way, if he doesn't decide to take the first step, he ends up staying as he is. The third reason that people don't become wealthy is procrastination. Even if it's occurred to a person that they can become wealthy and they have made a decision to change, procrastination will push all their plans into the indefinite future and nothing will ever happen. The fourth reason that people retire poor is what economists call the inability to delay gratification. If you cannot delay gratification and discipline yourself to refrain from spending everything you make, you cannot become wealthy. The fifth reason that people retire poor is perhaps as important as a lack of time perspective. The amount of time that you take into consideration when planning your day-to-day -day activities and when making important decisions in your life. People with long time perspective almost invariably move up economically in the course of their lifetime. Money flows away from those who use it poorly or who spend it in non-productive ways. Here now are the absolutely unbreakable laws of money. Number one is the law of abundance. We live in an abundant universe in which there is sufficient money for all who really want it and who are willing to obey the laws governing its acquisition. Your attitude of either abundance or scarcity toward money will have a major impact on whether you become rich or not. Individuals become wealthy because they believe they have the ability to become wealthy. They consistently do the things that turn their beliefs into realities. Why aren't you rich already? This is an important question to ask yourself. Your answers will expose your self-limiting beliefs, your doubts, fears, your favorite excuses, your rationalizations, and your justification. Write down all the reasons you could think of. Whatever your reasons or excuses, you can now get rid of them. The world is full of hundreds and thousands of people who have had far more difficulties they've gone on to be successful and shulk in you. Number two. Parkinson's Law Parkinson's Law is one of the best known and the most important laws of money and wealth accumulation. This law says that no matter how much money people earn, they tend to spend the entire amount and a little bit more besides. No matter how much they make, there never seems to be enough. The first corollary of Parkinson's Law says, Financial independence comes from violating Parkinson's Law. It is only when you develop sufficient willpower to resist the powerful urge to spend everything you make that you begin to accumulate money and move ahead of the crowd. The second corollary of Parkinson's law is this. If you allow your expenses to increase at a slower rate than your income increases and you save or invest the difference, you will become financially independent in your working lifetime. From this point onward, resolve to save and invest 50% of any increase you receive in your income from any source. This still leaves you the other 50% to do it as you desire. Number three, the law of three. There are three legs to the stool of financial freedom. Savings, insurance, and investment. To be fully protected against the unexpected, you require liquid savings equal to two to six months of normal expenses. The very act of saving this amount of money and 
putting it into a high yielding savings account or a money market account will give you a tremendous sense of confidence and inner peace. The second corollary of the Law of Three says that you must ensure adequately to provide against any emergency that you cannot pay for out of your bank account. Always carry sufficient insurance to protect yourself against an emergency that you cannot write a check to cover. And without adequate insurance, you are taking risk that you simply can't. Your ultimate financial goal should be to accumulate capital until your investments are paying you more than you can earn on your job. This seems like a very simple lifetime planning strategy, but it's remarkable how few people follow it. And how many people end up at the age of 65 with very little put aside? Number four, the law of the compound interest. When you let money accumulate at compound interest over a long enough period of time, it increases more than you can imagine. You can use the rule of 72 to determine how long it would take for your money to double at any rate of interest. For example, if you were receiving 8% interest on your investment, and you divided the number 72 by 8, you would get the number 9. This means that it would take you 9 years to double your money at 8% interest. The key to compound interest is to put the money away and never touch it. Though you spend only a small amount today, you will be giving up what could be an enormous amount later on. If you start early enough, invest consistently enough, never draw in your funds and Rely on the miracle of compound interest that will make you rich. Begin a regular monthly investment account and commit yourself to investing a fixed amount for the next 5, 10, or even 20 years. Number 5, the law of magnetism. The more money you save and accumulate, the more money you attract into your life. The more positive emotions you associate with your money, the more opportunities you will attract to acquire even more. The first corollary of the law of magnetism as it applies to money is that a prosperity consciousness attracts money like iron filings to a magnet. This is why it is so important for you to start accumulating money. No matter what your situation, that money, magnetized by your emotions of desire and hope, will begin to attract more money to you faster than you can imagine. You'll be amazed at what starts to happen. The more time you take to think intelligently about your finances, the better decisions you will make, and the more money you'll have to think about. Law number six of accelerating acceleration. The more money you accumulate and the more success you achieve, the more and faster money and success seems to move towards you from a variety of different directions. Fully 80% of your success will come in the last 20% of the time that you invest or put in, you'll achieve only about 20% of the total success possible for you. In the first 80% of the time and money that you invest, you'll achieve the other 80% in the last 20% of the time and money that you invest. To the greatest discovery of the 20th century, the discovery of the self-concept. And this self-concept is a combination of all your thoughts, feelings, beliefs, doubts, hopes, fears, and experiences throughout your entire life that come together make you the kind of person you are today. How you perform and behave on the outside, how you treat with people, what you accomplish is all determined by your internal programming. We also know that each person has a series of many self-concepts. What they have found is that every person has a self-concept which is like a thermostat. And this self-concept with regard to money, you never go more than 10% above or below your self-concept level of income. If you earn 10% or more below your self-concept level of income, you engage in what are called scrambling behaviors and you scramble to get your income back up. But once you're into that 10% range, plus or minus, you relax. And this becomes your comfort zone. And the great enemy of human success is the comfort zone. The only way that you can increase your income is to change your self-concept in relationship to income. Your overall self-concept is determined by your self-concept in all the areas of your life that you consider important is that your self-concept is made up of three parts. Number one, it's made up of your self-ideal. Your self-ideal, like three wedges of a pie, consists of your values, it consists of your ideals, consists of your goals, consists of your hopes, 
consists of your dreams, it consists of all those things that are inside you. There's a direct relationship between how clear you are about your goals and ideals and your self-ideal. What do we know about top people? Top people are clear about what they believe in and they don't compromise their values. What do we know about little people, weak people? Is they're very confused about their values and they compromise them for the slightest of edge. And the second part of your self-concept is called your self-image. Your self-image is the way you see but yourself and the way you think about yourself. Your self-image is called your inner mirror. Whenever you go to do anything, you check this mirror. Before you go in to see somebody in a sales call, you just got to check your inner mirror to see how do I perform in a sales call. And your performance on the outside is largely determined by your self-image. Remember, most people look at a mirror, intelligent people realize that whatever they see in their outer world is coming from themselves. So they always ask this great question, is what is it in me? The average person always tries to blame something in their external environment or someone, past, present, future. The third part of your self-concept is your self-esteem. Your self-esteem is the most important part of all. This is the emotional part of your personality. Whenever your self-image, your personal performance, is consistent with your self-ideal, the person that you would most like to be, your self-esteem goes up. Whenever you do something that's not like you, blow up, you get mad, I swear you do something that, you know, is not consistent with the best person you could be, your self-esteem takes a hit. Whenever you say the words, I like myself, your overall self-concept goes up. Your self-image improves and your self-ideal clarifies. And as your self-concept as your self -concept goes up, your performance and your behavior, every part of your life goes up as well. So if you keep repeating, I like myself. Like what happens is he eventually becomes a habit of thinking. Wake up in the morning and say, I like myself. Throughout the day and say, I like myself. Some of these ruder difficulties that doesn't bother me, I like myself. And you act like it initially. You like getting fit, your muscles will be stiff. But after a while, it starts to become automatic. Whenever you have any kind of negative event, you can immediately zap it by saying, oh, wait a minute, I like myself. Here's the most wonderful thing. The more you like yourself, the more you like other people. And the more you like other people, the more they like you right back. And what do you think is the foundation of self-confidence? Do you like yourself? Stay. The more you like yourself, the higher you're with self-confidence. The more you like yourself, the less you feel fail for your fear, failure, and rejection. In other words, things don't bother you because you actually develop almost like a Teflon cover around your emotions and you become a completely positive. The 60s are that post that says, I do not love you for yourself, but for the way you make me feel when I'm with you. The most powerful thing you can do in your relationships with other people is to make them like is to say things, to do things with them, not manipulatively, but positively, that cause them blindness. You go through the world, sort of like a hummingbird going from flower to flower, making people feel important, making people like themselves, and they're one of the most popular people there is. But you can't give away something you don't have. You can't make other people feel good about themselves unless you feel good about yourself. But if you really like yourself, you spontaneously and naturally do and say the things that cause other people to feel good about themselves. And when you talk to yourself in a positive way, your self-confidence goes up, game goes up, your relationships improve, sales will go up. All you need to do to raise your self-confidence, your self-esteem, your level of attainment high, is to have an absolutely crystal clear goal and work on it every single day. Psychologists recently have concluded as you feel yourself moving towards something that is important to you, your self-esteem and self-confidence go up. Whenever so you think of something that makes you unhappy or negative, you swing your thoughts often and you think about your goal and you work on your goal because your mind can only hold one thought at a time and if you're totally determined to achieve a single goal and you think about it and work on it every day eventually all the other things will fall away there's a wonderful line when you turn toward the sunshine the shadows fall behind you we in our advanced coaching programs we teach people to write down and, and create goals and plans once they've done it all 90 days later they come back and say how many of you reviewed your goals and plans in the last 90 days most of them didn't do it. How many of you achieved your goals and plans? All of them. The most amazing darn thing because by writing them out, they've programmed them into their subconscious mind, which then works 24 hours a day to bring it into their lives. Now here's the key. Do not refer to the previous day. What you do is you turn it over and you rewrite your goals again today. When you first write down 10 goals, they will be the first things that occur to you. The next day when you write them down without reference, you will change the order. So you find yourself writing the goals differently and in different order and sequence. Then, one by one, they start to be achieved and replace my your goal. A year from now, you will have accomplished so much. It will be astonishing to you. All it takes is five minutes a day. And it's really a test of how much you really want those goals. Is do you have the discipline to rewrite them every day? 
If you will do that, that front and lows the entire success process. You know, the very act of writing goals raises your self-esteem, it improves your self-image, it increases your self-confidence, and it activates your creative mind to start to see all kinds of ideas and ways to achieve the goals that you've written. It's literally life-changing. That one technique. I have never written a goal that I didn't achieve. And I've gone from living from rags to riches. And it was exactly what I wrote down. Write down what you want and make it clear so that the universe can help you get it. Create within your mind the mental equivalent of what you would like to see on the outside. If you will do that, all the mental laws that we've talked about and many more that we haven't had a chance to go into and what you want will appear on the outside by the law of cause and effect, belief, expectation, attraction, correspondence, and so on. Take a clean piece of paper when you get home and you would write down 10 goals. And these goals, you, you can write more than 10 if you like, but you must write a minimum of 10. These goals are one-year goals, approximately. You write them in the present tense as though a year has passed and you are reporting they've already been achieved. I have taken people through this exercise all over the world once. I come back a year or two years later and they say the same words in every language. You won't believe what's happened to me. You won't believe I found those goals in something a year later and you won't believe what's happened to me. I've accomplished all the goals. When you write down a goal, you activate three learning modalities. The visual, you can see it. The auditory, you sub-vocalize it. We say it to yourself. And the kinesthetic, you write it. All three together, and it goes straight into the subconscious mind. And just go on with the rest of your life, that 24 hours a day. Great superconscious mind is working to bring the goal into your life. When you get a chance, you sit down, you write this goal at the top of a page, and you set a deadline for the goal. When you get up in the morning, you think about the goal. When you go through the day, you think about the goal. Whenever something gets you off track, you stop and think about the goal. Because the goal is always inherently positive. When you think about the goal, you become happy. You move toward the goal, you feel powerful. You feel like a winner. You feel like you're in control of your life. And once you know you can do anything you put your mind to, your self-confidence will go through the roof.